Hey y'all, what's up? It's me Z coming to you from my parents' living room. Um, so if you watched any of my last videos, I'm clearly not in the same space that I normally am. Long story short, I was in DC, got a new job, supposed to move to Seattle, a pandemic hits, and so now I'm kind of just chilling at my parents' house. All right, now that we got that out of the way, on to today's video, which is a Q&A slash FAQ video. So I ask y'all what questions y'all have for me on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I get, so one, I have way more subscribers now. So hello, if you're new, hello, welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing, tell your friends. Um, so when I got this wave of new subscribers, I got all these questions, so many questions. A lot of them I had already answered on my channel, but obviously if you found me on Twitter or Instagram, you don't know that I have a YouTube channel. So anyways, so many questions from there. So I decided to compile everything into one video and then ask y'all if y'all had any more questions. And so we're going to answer them now. And they're in this box because I was too lazy. I don't even want to say lazy. Why waste a bowl on this? One more thing I got to watch. No, it's just strips of paper. So here we go. Oh, I guess let me just answer some basic questions though. Um, I am Meezy. I go by Meezy. Welcome to my channel. The name of the channel is pronounced Al Meezya. Um, one day I'll tell y'all why that's the name of the channel, but not today. Um, what else? I am 24. I graduated high school in 2013. I'm from Dallas. Um, so I went to high school in Dallas and then I went to college at Texas Tech, Reckham. I graduated from there in 2017. And then I moved to DC for my first job. And so I lived there until March. And um, now I will be in Seattle eventually. And I can't think of anything else. So I'm just gonna start answering questions. All right, are you learning a new language at Microsoft? Um, yes and no um a new language not so much but new technologies yes i work a lot with dynamics 365 um which is more of the business software that they sell so yeah so i'm having to learn how to do that also i don't speak for microsoft anything that i say in my videos is all me all what i would like to say in no way represents the views of microsoft or the company or any company that they own I feel like I have to say that now um, so yes anyways let's continue the video how did you study for your job at Microsoft okay so I got really intense and also this does not apply just to Microsoft um, this is just how I studied for my job hunt in general um, now I have like three or four videos at least four videos talking about like what I use to study how to study for interviews my personal like a study session with me all that but to wrap it all up i was really really strict with myself during this job hunt so i started like in late october early november my first interview wasn't until december i want to say um but i started prepping before that so when i started prepping i did not go out anymore i did not drink any alcohol anymore because you don't have to go out to drink alcohol so i wasn't hanging out with people i wasn't drinking alcohol and I deleted my social media apps. Now, I was still on social media. Like I was still logging in every once in a while, but it wasn't like I was on there all the time, um, how I normally am. And I just really buckled down and I was study four hours during the week. So I'd come home from work, study four hours using Lead Code, ca cracking the coding interview, watching YouTube videos about like coding questions, whatever. Um, and then on the weekends, I would study for eight hours. So I would do like two, four hour sessions or however I decided to break it down. So Monday through Friday, four hours a day, um, Saturday and Sunday, eight hours a day. And what is that? Like 20 plus 16, 36. So 36 hours a week, roughly of just studying. Um, and it was rough. And I think that's kind of why I went nuts. And it's definitely why I had to switch up what I used to study. Like... I had to switch from leak code to cracking the code interview and kind of go back and forth and just find different resources. Um, so yeah, that's how I studied. And the only days I would take breaks are days when I had an interview. So if I had an interview, I would count that as my studying for the day. That is how I did that. 
Took a long time, but it was worth it in the end. Where did I go to school? Texas Tech. If I could live anywhere, where would it be? If I could live anywhere, now I'm only going by places I've visited. Um, I would live in Austin. I love Austin, Texas. Like, I don't, it, I don't, I don't know. They call it the Silicon Valley of Texas, but it's really not that, but I just really like the city. Um, that, that's the answer to the question, okay? Austin, y'all can drag me in the comments if you want to. What year of college did you get your first internship? I got my first internship my, I want to say after my freshman year of college, let me think. Yep, it was after my freshman year. So I joined this internship program that's available to people who live in Dallas. So you don't have to go to school in Dallas, but you have to like live in Dallas. They match you with uh, local internships. Um, so basically any company that's in Dallas you can be matched with. So some people interned at like AT&T, um, that's the only one I can remember. I was at Parkland specifically. I worked in the IT um, office at Parkland, the hospital, and that was my first internship in 2014. Okay, somebody asked for networking tips, and <laughs> obviously I've never had to network over the internet. But you know what? Actually, I did. So, I will say interact with people on the internet. I, okay, listen, we live in a different world now, so I will give you real life networking tips. My real life networking tip is to just like go for it. I don't like talking to people when it's not organic. Like I always feel like talking to somebody for a job, it feels like you have like a motive and like maybe you don't really want to talk to them. I don't know, it's just a weird thing to me. So it's one of my least favorite things to do, but when you have any kind of reason for you to want to get out of whatever situation you're in and move forward in your life like you will find the courage and all that to go up to these people and talk to them and that's really how I got my job was through networking I talked to a lot of people at Grace Hopper at Afrotech and it was literally just me like walking up to them yeah um that's for in person on the internet I say just interact with people um and the more that you interact with somebody the more that they will be willing to answer a question from you if you DM them. But honestly, ask on the TL first, like on the timeline, sorry. <laughs> ask outwardly first, so like leave a comment or like just at them. Cause if you have the question, somebody else probably has a question. So it's better for both of y'all if you just ask. Um, ask in public versus in the DMs, but Either way is fine, whatever you're comfortable with. But yeah, just interact with people online. It's a lot easier. If you get embarrassed, you could just delete it, I guess. So, favorite and least favorite technology that I own. Um, my favorite. I'm not gonna say most used, cause that would just be my iPhone. Like, so that that's kind of my favorite by default, but it's not like the most amazing thing to me. I guess my favorite would be my gimbal, the Osmo 3. Um, my least favorite is my Series 1 Apple Watch. Uh, I bought it in 2017 and it was, I still thought it was a bee's knees back then, but now I'm just like, this is hot garbage. Now mind you, it is very old and outdated and it's a Series 1 but I own it and it's my least favorite thing. How should I learn to code slash what language should I pick to learn how to code slash anything about getting started learning to code? So I started coding in high school. I took computer science classes in high school. So um, that's kind of where I started. It really wasn't by choice. We had to take those classes at my high school. So um, I kind of just, I guess I kind of walked into it. I mean, I did choose to go to that high school, but that's besides the point. Um, so that's how I learned. I didn't have a choice in my first language. The first language that I learned was Java. Um, and I think maybe we did some Python. I might be making that up. I can't remember. Um, so uh, yeah, I didn't have a choice of my first language. So I'm not like biased to anything. When I got to college and I took my like prereq classes or my like low level classes we didn't have a choice i had to use c in one class and then i had to use java for another class and then in my project classes we started using android studio so it's still java so um basically what i'm saying is just pick one it literally because the, cause the 
at the end of the day, if you just learn computer science concepts, all of the language stuff is just like nothing, right? It, when somebody asks what language should I learn first to learn how to code, um, it's kind of like if you went up to a librarian and asked them what genre of book should you read first because you want to start reading books. Like it really doesn't matter which one you pick. Do you know how to read? Because if you know how to read, you can go to any of these genres. But if you don't know how to read, all of this is going to be hard for you. So just pick one and go for it. Um, it really doesn't matter. If you if your end goal is to get a job, sure, pick a popular one. You know, JavaScript, uh, Java. I mean, they're all popular in their own right. Um, and so you can even start learning to code in one language and say, you know what, actually, I hate this. And then just jump to another one. Like, it's not, it's not that deep. Um, and at the end of the day, you need to focus more on coding concepts than the actual language. And that is where the money comes from, right? Because I could, I could get a job working with any language. There will be, of course, the learning curve to learn the specifics of that language. But at the end of the day, because I know coding concepts and computer science concepts, I'll be good, right? So that is my advice on that. Also, I have a video, a whole video about that if you need something more in depth. Okay, what is your personal mission slash goal for your career? My goal in my career is to get to a position where I'm in leadership, but I still get to code. What do I do at work? Um, well, the question says, what do you do at work? A lot of people ask me this, specifically my family. <laughs> um, so at my last job, I did mostly web development. So I worked on the website for said company. Um, and I developed the code to make that work. So I just wrote code all day to make a website work, um, to add in specific features, you know, check this box. You can't go to that page until you check this box. Um, what else? That's really it, you know, you write the code, you test out the code, you look at the code when it hits production. Um, I'll, pro I'll just do a day in a life and maybe that'll help y'all understand what I do more. But yeah, I just type all day to make a computer understand what I'm saying and then I push it off onto the internet and boom, y'all see it. Should you only apply for jobs after you take data structures and algorithms class? No, I didn't wait until after then. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, you still gotta prepare for the interviews. They might have coding challenges. Just prepare for them. You don't have to take an algorithms class to do that. And I didn't know any of that stuff at my first internship, so. How do you stay productive? So as we are in the midst of a pandemic, my idea of productivity has definitely changed. If I want to do something, I do it. If I don't want to do something, I don't. And that's just kind of how it's been. I mean, this is a very tough time to be alive. Like, it's all good for a little bit. And then you step outside of the house and you remember that like, just breathing you could possibly die so um i don't know it's just like do what you want to do uh, i do try to hold myself accountable so instead of being so specific about what i'm gonna do be like okay on wednesday i'm gonna work out at 7 30 and then at 8 30 i'm gonna eat dinner i'm just like listen this week i'm gonna work out three times i'm gonna post two videos and then i'm going to eat dinner every day by 8 p.m right so Planning something out but giving myself the flexibility to do it whenever I want to because some days I will plan a super productive day and then I wake up and I'm like nope that's not happening so I, I just have to give myself flexibility and if I don't want to do something I just don't do it it is what it is <laughs> rate the top tech companies from your perspective based on what it's like to work there now, mind you, I have not worked at most top tech companies. Um, <laughs> so, oh man, let me say this. I'm, I'm not going to rate them because I don't know anything about them. And if I had to rate them based off of what I've heard, they would kind of all be in the same position. So let me say it this way. I have only, the only large tech company I had never heard horror stories about during slash before my job search was Microsoft all right 
everybody else I have heard horror stories now it's not to say <laughs> that people don't like their jobs at other major tech companies um, it's just that I that Microsoft is the only one where I hadn't heard a horror story of being like overworked and blah 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 but like I said all of this is related to you know the bubble that I live in right I'm just, there's probably some people with Microsoft horror stories I hope not but they I'm sure they exist so I don't know I can't really rank them because I've never worked at all of them but that that's that's that on that what got you into tech um when I was in high school, as I previously said, I was forced to take computer science, but I was also forced to do a lot of other kinds of engineering, and I sucked at the other ones. I sucked at electrical for sure. I sucked at physics. I sucked at chemistry. So the only thing I did suck at was computer science, and now here I am. What inspired you to start your YouTube channel? So I, I had always wanted to have a YouTube channel. When I was a kid, when YouTube first became a thing, um, my favorite channels were Live Lava Live and Community Channel and Kevin, what's his name? Kev Jumba. Kev Jumba and Niga Higa. I never knew how to pronounce that. Um, those are my favorite, favorite channels. And so <laughs> I begged my parents to buy me a camera and they did. And I used to record videos, but they never saw the light of day. Um, but yeah, so I would say little middle school me who is uh obsessed with youtube it is why i started finally started my youtube channel last question did you apply to multiple companies or just microsoft i applied to so many companies i applied everywhere i know i submitted at least 50 applications and out of the applications i submitted i probably got like one interview actually of all the applications i submitted only got one interview all right so that that is it that is the q a uh thank you so much for asking your questions if there's any question that you want answered that i didn't answer in this video please leave it in the comments um it helps everybody out when you leave questions in the comments that way everybody can see my answers to them um make sure you subscribe make sure you share this video and i will see you next time bye